Greetings, mortals. I am your host, Squall Squall, and welcome to a brand new episode of a brand new series I'd like to call Four Sprouts by Sprouts, a guide to Final Fantasy XIV. Now, a lot of you have probably seen Final Fantasy XIV around places that tell you, hey, you should play this game. Play the game. It's super fun. I want to give you a chance to understand why I want you to play the game, why I think the game is fun, why I think it is enjoyable, and all the little tips and tricks and nitty gritty about it. Now, for the most part, what I want to cover is what is Final Fantasy XIV? Well, Final Fantasy XIV is a massively multiplayer online role-playing game where you essentially play as a character, in my case, Squall-All here in the blue suit, uh, and you go to save the world from enemies who are attempting to take over the world and be dictatorial. If you've ever paid attention in history class about why you should not be a tyrant yeah, we're basically trying to stop tyrants. We are the opposing force to potential tyrants who haven't quite taken over the world yet, but are trying to. And the reason I want you all to play it is because it is a game that allows you to interact with other people from all over the world for a common goal. Uh, it's... It's a little hard to explain without tell explaining to you why I okay I want you to play it without um well demonstrating but for the most part I want to go over what the game is and give some backstory as to uh, why that is let me. Uh, so. For the most part, you should play the game because it allows you to interact with other people, to explore beautiful worlds, experience grand sights, and get to make your character look cool, I guess. Uh, there are so many things to cover that we won't be covering it in just one episode. We'll be doing about five episodes. but. One major thing to note is that this game is very community forward. You will be seeing a lot of things referencing interacting with other people, and I say play the game if you like RPGs, if you like interacting with characters, creating a story. Some of you are probably coming here from other MMOs, like uh, World of Warcraft and other games. But the main thing I think you all need to understand is that 14 is like none other when it comes to MMOs, at least that I've played. It is very story based, meaning it will draw you into the story and will get you interested in the story for long, long haul, or at least attempt to. Whereas with a game like World of Warcraft, it's very location based and not so much story based and we'll just kind of tack on the story at the end of it all or at the very least try to rewrite the whole thing so it's more story based. At least that's what I've been seeing from an outsider who hasn't touched World of Warcraft since I was a freshman in high school. I think middle school maybe, but still. If you like stories, games that have interesting characters who aren't just flat, even the NPCs who you will see like twice, and maybe never again, unless you return to that location, have story behind them. And for the most part, you will be encountering a long, long story. That is the most part of the game. Even parts where you feel you aren't in the main story can feel long. But that gives you the opportunity to take it slow to not rush the game 
to let it play out as you wish and not feel upset if you don't decide, decide not to play for about five days. But as another feature, One of the things that you'll have to note the game about the game is that the game the game wants you to work with other people. And if that's not your thing, then you probably won't like this game as much because there are segments where you legitimately have to interact with people. But if you don't mind the occasional run in with a random individual, then it's an absolutely lovely game with absolutely beautiful scenery. One final thing I want to mention while we're in this room here is that there is a free trial. If you've heard of this game, you've probably heard of the free trial. Why do I want you to pick the free trial? Because the free trial doesn't have a time limit. Gets you up to level 60 all jobs and gets you up to the second expansion, which is Heaven's Work. Technically, the yeah, it's the second expansion, because the first part of the game is called A Realm Reborn. And it's called A Realm Reborn because it's essentially the second releasing of this game. A lot of you are probably looking at this game and going, Why is it 2.0? Why can't I play 1.0? Because 1.0 was a dumpster fire, at least enough that the devs had to pull in new people to take a look at this. And somebody went, yeah, we need to take down the game in order to fix all these issues. So they put into the story something that can make sense for why the game is down for extended periods of time. And then went to turn around some ideas and then spat out A Realm Reborn. A Realm Reborn is the expansion that was added when 1.0 had really bad press, was not getting good reviews and was essentially considered crap. I am being honest with you. I'm not here was not here for it. If I was, I would have told you. But there are other people who were there for it and there were other characters who you if you've played the it during then, you would have re remembered them or at least recognized them. But the long and the short is that the meteor fell, I think it's a meteor wiped out everything, and the person we were interacting with during all of 1.0 saved our hides, killed, got killed in the process, and now we have 2.0. That is the story of what happened before 2.0. And the demo will get you a chance to play through A Realm Reborn, the 2.0 expansion, and Heavensward, I believe through he all through Heavensward, the 3.0 expansion, which should get you fully into it. And for those of you who have also heard that 2.0 is very long and tedious, it can be. Don't skip it. There are ways you can. Don't skip it. It is a game that I recommend you savor. Because if you take the time to explore the world, to get used to everything, and to get yourself fully immersed into the game world, you will have a, chan a better chance of understanding the world as things go. Let me just... Get out of here. Uh, out of most things, A Realm Reborn will set you up for a lot of things. Like, why are you in this world? Why are you in... in Ulda, Thanalan? And why are you in Thanalan with Ulda or Gridania in the Black Shroud? Or... or Lenosia with, with Limsa Lominsa? It'll get you used to the areas, the locations, and will get you up to certain levels. As you can see, I am a level 55 paladin at this point. And that took a lot of time and effort I'm er, to do, but I'm, I've been playing for at least a year. I've not left the expansion, but that's because I've been off and on playing. And I got to do so much. There are so many things you can do with this game. You can essentially be every battle class and non-battle class you want with the same character. Whereas other games, if you wanted to be a weaver and a warrior, you have to be two different characters at once. Even with 
Squire's first uh, RPG, which is Final Fantasy XI. I don't think they have it the same way they do here. I mean, you can have so many more options than Eleven had, but Eleven was the jump. I think the jumping off point for fourteen. If it wasn't for Eleven giving them the basis for ideas, then we wouldn't have fourteen as we do. And I'll talk about this in another episode, but. Final Fantasy XIV is an RPG where you are tasked with saving the world and being its protector along with your buddies. You and your team are the ways to protect the world. And with the demo, it should give you a good idea as to what you are doing, how things are. And I know I'm probably being repetitive, but... That's just how the, the demo works. And I will be prefacing a few things. One, you can't get the demo on Steam. You can get the, it, the game on Steam, but the demo for some reason is not available on Steam. And I don't know why you can get the whole game subscription and all on Steam, but not the demo, which is strange. I don't quite understand it, but for the most part, um, you can get the demo on the Square Enix website and it should do you quite fine. If you have a PlayStation 4 or 5, it doesn't matter which, you can play this game there. I'm not sure about the demos available on there as well. I think it is. I think Steam is the only place you can't get it. Don't quote me on this. If you're better versed on this, you can, you can, uh, Pop that in the comments and explain. But just because you're on a computer doesn't mean you're limited to keyboard and mouse. I am using keyboard and mouse, but that's because I prefer keyboard and mouse. You can also use a controller. Controllers are perfectly fine, but I'd say only do that if you want to use the free trial, want to have it on your laptop like I do, and want it to travel, but also don't want to necessarily be stuck with con with keyboard controls. Just get a 360 controller off Amazon for like, I don't know, 20 bucks. It should do you fine. There are settings available to you. And a lot of you are probably looking at this and going, what am I looking at? What, what am I seeing? Why is this the way the screen is? This is the basic gameplay that I have just to kind of get you in used to the game world as things are. I'm not going to be doing anything particularly fancy. I'm mainly just going to be exploring the world as I explain to you um, about the game and why I want you think you to I think you should play it. But for the most part, one of the big major features I think everybody needs to get a chance to understand is that it's not... It's not a bland game like everybody thinks. Oh, it's an RPG from Japan. It's going to have all sorts of things to make note of that are probably insert Japanese stereotype here. But look at this world. Just look at the just the architecture that is put in that has been designed for this game. Take a take a long gander at this and just explore the world for yourself. You have a demo that essentially has no time limit, and you can have up to level 60 all jobs, so you have all the time in, your, in the world to explore. Just explore the area around you, and to have fun. All sorts of locations, all sorts of places, people to see, things to do, and it's not open world. A lot of people might think such a big game would be open world, and it's not. It's very good at pretending to be open world by giving you very short and quick uh, loading zones. As you saw when I exited uh, Ulda and went straight into Thanalan here. Um, there are so many other locations where you just change locations and then 
here you are, suddenly within about two seconds. Considering how packed this game is, you would never know that it's so packed unless you are having trouble signing in. In which case, I will warn you, we've just had an update, we've had the 6.45 expansion that I want you to worry, to note about and be careful about if you are having trouble signing in. Whenever there's a big expansion, there's always going to be something that's going to cause everybody in their grand who already plays it to sign on and overload the servers and you can't play because everybody in the grand is trying to already. It may seem rather empty right now, but I'm playing at 7.52 my time. That should tell you why there's not a lot of people. And there goes a player. Hide Stratos. You'll find weird people all over the place. Some people like me who have actual names that, bef that match the vibe of the world. And then you'll find Marshmallow McThickums or Twinkerbell and just they exist. They just do stuff with those weird names and think names. And there are so many weird and fun ways you can decorate your character and interact with the world. And I'm trying not to get too much ahead of myself, but it's kind of hard to explain much more without getting into detail of what's going to be in the later episodes, in which I implore you to watch the other episodes, where you'll get to explore more worlds instead of just Thanaland and various other areas. Get to explore what that means and what these various animals are and the, what a cactus leaf is doing here when it normally isn't here. Why is this thing blue? You'll learn all about that in episode, I think, three. I don't remember what I had in my notes. Uh, we'll talk about fates at, on a later date, but just, just take advantage of the fact that a realm we're born is slow to explore the world, to get to know the world, and to get yourself invested in the characters. And to just have a good time. Just have a good time. Make friends. And just... Just have fun. Because the last thing you want to do is to pull up this game, find out you hate it, and want nothing to do with it. This game is for everybody who is a fan of RPGs or is coming from other MMO games and wants a new experience. If you are a player who likes games that have lots of story, let's say you, you're coming from Kingdom Hearts. It's not all happy-go-lucky as Kingdom Hearts can be at times, but it is very detail-oriented with the story. It keeps people invested in the story. And if you've looked on the internet, just Google Final Fantasy XIV, you'll notice there's an icy blue-haired elf dude that everybody seems to fawn over. Do you want to know what happens to him? Why people love him so much? Play the game. Get to know the community just a little bit. If you have a friend who plays this game and who's been begging you to play it, ask them to take you by the hand and lead you through it. If you don't, I am going to be my and do my best to lead you through this. Give me your questions. I will see if I can answer it in this episode, being in the next episode, or the one after that. And we'll see what we can do going from here on out. And if there's anything you think I should cover, I really would appreciate it if you did so. And I want you all to experience this game that has given me joy. The game that has given me so much enjoyment over the past few years, you know, over, the pa over my time playing. I mean, I get to have fun. I get to do all sorts of things. I get to upgrade my gaming experience by 
checking for online sources and ways to modify my use of the game. If you can think of a way to make the game better, there's probably somebody who's put that on paper. Just don't be a jerk about it and you're probably fine. The entirety of this game is basically bound by good players who help each other and who work together to make things work. And just because you picked a starting class, like I picked Gladiator to start with and am now a Paladin by result, doesn't mean you have to stick with it. If I wanted to, I could immediately pick Samurai and change to Samurai right then and there and not have to worry about being stuck with Samurai. Or I could pick Marauder and immediately pick Marauder and go right to those and have all sorts of classes and things to do. Or I could just craft for hours on end as a weaver and have fun doing it. Helping people and getting to know this gorgeous world that is available to you at your fingertips is some of the most fun things you can do ever. And I just want you all to experience the same level of enjoyment I do. And just to have fun. To enjoy the game like I do. And to have fun. But I will say, it is an expensive game. Once you get the free trial and figure out that you like this game and enjoy this game, it is not a cheap game. With the expansions and the subscription, it is not cheap. But cons all things considered, considering how much money the players put in, we get a lot of stuff out. They listen to us as players and add things in. I'm, at least I'm pretty sure. I mean, there were some things that I used to do with the game that now become standard features. If you notice by some of those names, you'll notice a little symbol that is in a square. That was a feature that recently added that is much, much more helpful. It helps me identify what I'm looking at when it comes to what player class people are at. And it's just, it's one of those things that I really think is, is so nice that Square Enix is willing to listen to the the people who play the game and figure out ways to make it better because they have players who are their devs the devs play the game Yoshi P plays a Lalafell he plays the race I do um and one of the things I really appreciate is that the game doesn't really seem to hold a lot for making you be stuck in gender specific outfits Squallow is a lady. You would never know unless I told you. Because that outfit looks like something you'd find on a dude. And I totally see why. And I wanted that outfit for Squallow because I thought it was a good outfit that fit her lore. And a friend of mine helped me get the slacks and coat so I was able to get Squallow looking lore accurate. And it's, it's those experiences that make the game great. Finding friends who are willing to help you get the things you need to make your character look the way you do. That's why I want you to play the game. For the friends you will make, for the fun times you will have, for the ability to create a character however you want. You want your big buff dude in a miniskirt? Bet you can! Want your lady to wear an eye patch and a, a suit to look like a film noir detective who lost her, her eye in a bloody gunfight? You can do it! You can even have guns in this game, despite it being very medieval. I know for some of you who are looking at me going, Squall all, why? Why can you have guns in this game? Don't look at me, talk to the devs, ask them why the machinist class exists. But 
You can have fun in this game in whatever way you want, as long as you are being respectful to other people and aren't trying to essentially go against the game rules, I guess. There's not a lot that I can say that you can't do, aside from don't try to get people to pay you to give them actual in-game currency because there's not a feature in this game that makes you pay for more currency because you can get currency extremely easily. You complete five quests and you already have a, or up a good 5k gil. I'm not kidding. So, in the end, I want you to understand that although this game is expensive, it has a lot of charm and a lot of heart to it. A lot of effort was put into this game to make it be the way it is. And it's because of players like us. Us new players who have such joy in the game that the game does as well as it does. And yes, it's expensive and that may be off-putting. But you can cancel your subscription at any time and you aren't required to really get out of the free trial. All I recommend is that you get the free trial, play it through A Realm Reborn, at least. I forget how long A Realm Reborn is, but at least play through that. And then see if it's something you want to continue. Give A Realm Reborn a shot, and then see if afterwards you feel like you could continue. Because after A Realm Reborn, the pace picks up. And it will go faster, and you will suddenly realize, hey, I've reached 6145 expansion content. When did I do that? Or you could be like me, and for the longest time, I was just a fisher as my highest class, and ended up going to different parts of the in-game world for the sole factor that my fisher class was the thing that allowed me to do stuff. And I needed things from other locations because Fisher. So I went places because I was just a Fisher. Or you could just hang out with your friends and pretend you're on an adventure. There are people playing all sorts in all sorts of ways. Somewhere out there, there's a Johnny Bravo in a gold suit. And I kid you not, I ran into him. If you are that Johnny Bravos, well, congratulations, you are now a treasure screenshot in my folder. But for those of you new players, I appreciate the fact that you are actually watching this video. And I want to also appreciate you for, watching, for just taking the chance to do to the end of the video. If you enjoyed my content, please like comment, and subscribe. You'll get a better chance to see more of my content. And stay tuned for episode 2, where we will be covering... Let me check my notes here. Hello, random person. Hello, random cat. Yes, hello. Um, we'll be checking out things like character creation, uh, expansion, Checking the character creation, the expansion packs, all sorts of things to know about what to do when your first day playing 14. Now, that's it for today's episode of Final Fantasy 14. Sayonara, au revoir, adibatachi, au revoir,